Hello, Jean here and welcome. While having clear and consistent discipline policies and procedures and treatment lists can act as a backbone for keeping schools safe and thriving, so too is having systems in place that communicate what behaviors are expected in the various environments in your school. When schools support the positive action of their students, they promote a learning environment that is predictable and fosters respect. In this lesson, we will help you to create an evidence-based PBIS school-wide expected behavior matrix that can be used to set the standard for what's desired in your school. Essentially, this is a chart that helps you map out and make visible the pro-social behaviors and character traits you wish to foster in your students. In your guidebooks, you will find a list of character traits to choose from when making your decision. Many schools like to initially choose six to eight and then have their faculty vote on the choices, ultimately picking, say, three to five as their top traits. To make these character traits really stand out and become part of your school, you may want to connect these traits to a catchy acronym, a school mascot, motto, or symbol as a way to build that sense of community we want in our schools. Maybe even pick a song, uh, create a jingle or a catchy tune to go along with it. You'll find a couple examples to use as models in your guidebooks, such as ROAR, respect, ownership, accountability, and responsibility, or EPIC, engaged, personal responsibility, integrity, considerate. So let's pause here while you get to choosing your top character traits. Once that's complete, resume the video, okay? Let's get doing. Welcome back. Hopefully you have some really solid traits picked out. We will now move on to transforming those character traits to an expected behavior matrix chart that can be utilized school-wide to promote positive behaviors in your students. In your guidebooks, you have an expected behavior matrix chart that you can use to guide you in developing that PBIS system. In the first column, you'll wanna fill the boxes out with the character traits you've chosen for your school, such as the popular, be respectful, be safe, be responsible. Next, you'll want to fill in the top row with the various environments in your school, such as bus, hallway, cafeteria, recess, bathroom, and classroom. Your next task will be to pause here and fill in the boxes determining what expected behavior should look like in each of the categories in an environment listed. For example, you might have identified be respectful be safe, be responsible as your main character trait headings. On the bus, that might look like being respectful on the bus means listening to the bus driver and keeping your voices quiet. Being safe on the bus might be staying seated and keeping your hands and bodies to yourself. Being responsible on the bus might be in keeping your things in your backpack and keeping the bus clean. As you develop your expected behavior matrix charts, it's vital to decide whose voices are being included or silenced at the decision-making table. Is there an opportunity for students to join this process and exercise their voice and agency? Could they help to more effectively support the equitable development of these expectations? Just like educators appreciate being seen, heard, and valued, so do students. This is a perfect time to cultivate student engagement and belonging to lead to more impactful results. Youth that are provided with opportunities to work with peers and adults to co-create equitable solutions through collaborative problem solving and responsible decision making help to strengthen democratic learning environments so all kids can thrive. Pause here 
and begin the process to outline these expected behaviors and how you might co-construct them as a school community. Schools may want to separate into small groups in order to expedite the process. Once you've finished, please come back and resume the video. Okay, let's get started. Now that you've completed your expected behavior matrix, you're going to want to make these charts visible for all to see. Otherwise, your efforts will have been wasted. Some schools have them made into professional posters. Others create their own. It doesn't really matter as long as it's made visible for all to adhere to. As a suggestion, you could expand on your expected behavior matrix chart by adding those treatment lists so kids know what to expect and can comply with your expectation. You can refer to your guidebooks for some examples. The next step to this process is to decide how best to coach and reinforce these expected behaviors. This means setting aside time for students to role play and practice them. Actively engaging in teaching, modeling, and shaping these desired behaviors is critical to ensuring these skills grow in your students. As they say, the best way to shape any skill is to practice, practice, practice. You'll also want to come up with a system for positively reinforcing these expected behaviors on a daily basis. Some schools opt to expand upon their selected character traits by connecting them to a chosen reward system. For instance, the school that adopted ROAR as their acronym uses a dragon as their mascot and rewards kids with golden coins to fill their cauldron, inspired by the movie How to Train Your Dragon. Keep in mind, not all reinforcement systems need to link to external rewards. Your teacher language is a powerful built-in reward system that can shape your students' internal motivation. When you give students positive verbal feedback that champions their efforts, it makes them feel good and drives their motivation to continue to grow and flourish. Personally, no matter the age, I like to spring my tangible rewards on unexpectedly whenever I feel my students deserve it. Everyone loves a surprise. That way, kids don't rely on some outside reinforcement to do the right thing. I want my students to build up their internal compass for doing the right thing because they care, not because they're counting on pajama day. But you gotta throw them a bone once in a while. So don't skimp on having those little celebrations from time to time. Bottom line, kids will remember these events the most and chances are, so will you. So take this action step now and decide as a staff, how are you gonna reinforce these behaviors in action? Take the time now to get doing and determine your reward system. And I'll see you in the next lesson.